I just can't pump these videos out fast enough, it seems, as it's been revealed what's officially in Baldur Gate 3's Patch 5. We're still getting the fixes that Patch 4 introduced, but we now know what this new epilogue specifically entails, as I'm currently playing through it. The new playable epilogue, accessible to anyone loading the game prior to the final fight, or afterwards, where you're dealing with Orpheus or whatever decisions you chose, this takes place before the actual credits. Players find themselves in camp six months after the events of Baldur Gate 3 stories, where you meet, you know, all your companions, your friends like Volo, and so on and so on. You know, taking all the time you need to say uh, your final goodbyes to, you know, the game and your party. Larian calls this epilogue a final goodbye. For the writers of Larian, this final goodbye has been some of the most complex writing in the game so far as it takes advantage of the game's reactivity across the entire adventure. A gigantic tree of permutations defines the content, with new writing, about 3,589 lines to be exact, cinematics, and even characters joining the get-together at camp, organized by Withers. Your epilogue is defined by you. This is the culmination of every choice and consequence that you've made since the very start of your adventure. A gigantic tree a permutation that leads to an opportunity to reflect on that journey before you say goodbye. For the writers of Larian, this final goodbye has resulted in some of the most complex writing in the game thus far, as it takes advantage of Baldur Gate 3's reactivity across the entire adventure. Hopefully, this also finally gives Karlak romancers the closure they need for a happy ending. Spoiler alert, it kinda does. <laughs> Now, interestingly enough, we're also getting two new difficulty modes, Honor Mode and Custom Mode. Honor Mode makes the game more difficult in and out of combat and introduces over 30 new tweaks to all of the game's boss fights, with a new legendary action system designed to catch players off guard and increase the challenge. Now, bosses can perform new actions, adding twists and turns to all the major fights throughout the game. Inspiration points become more valuable in Otter Mode because loading previous games, or save scumming, is disabled, meaning players need to keep count. When a player dies, they will be presented with statistics of their journey, including how long and how far they survived for. Should players choose, they can continue their adventure, which will then disable Honor Mode. Players who do manage to complete the entire game with Honor Mode enabled, without dying, will be awarded the coveted Golden D20. Oh boy. The only reason I was able to beat Tactician Mode was to aggressively save Scum my way through it. If this is going to add a new trophy related to it, my Platinum Trophy is in big trouble. A few moments later. It has now come to my attention, after checking my trophy list, that there is indeed an Honor Trophy. <sighs> well, time to kiss that 100% completion. Uh, adios. Now, Custom Mode, on the other hand, lets players pick and choose a type of experience best for them. Options include the ability to hide the required role to succeed dice checks, which gives a more realistic D&D experience, as well as the ability to hide enemy HP in battle, again, more closely simulating the tabletop style. Other options include short rest fully healing the party, disabling death saving throws, and hiding failed perception checks. Oh. What was that? Perception failed. What did we fail? At perception? How do we know if we failed at perception if we failed to perceive it? We don't. How's that fair? Which means you'll never know there was even a role to begin with. Patch 5 also introduces inventory access, letting players manage the inventory of all companions from one single UI, regardless of whether or not they're currently in your party. Larian also mentioned performance improvements engineered as a consequence of the Xbox version of Baldur's Gate 3, which benefits all platforms. Now, this is also a massive list of patch notes, which would take till the end of time to completely go over, so I'm just going to list a couple of highlights. Dynamic resolution has been added to PS5. There's a lot of performance enhancements, particularly for Act 3. While at camp, you can now access and manage the inventories of companions who aren't in your active party. Oren's outfit now drops as loot and is wearable by anyone, so... Yeah, I already know who's, uh, what everyone's going to be putting that on. <laughs> and a romance Minthara can now refer to her bond with you using a drow word for deep, unbreakable love, even further solidifying her as one of the top-tier waifus of this game. 
We're also getting some combat balances, some gameplay tweaks, performance and optimization, as well as animation art, some UI tweaks, and better flow and scripting for some flags triggering wrong. Baldur's Gate 3 is a generation-defining game, and yet it still somehow keeps getting better and better, which doesn't seem realistically possible. Larian has cemented itself as one of the best video game developers in a long, long time, and with seven wins at the recent Golden Joysticks and eight nominations at the upcoming Game Awards, the sky is the limit for this studio. Let's all just take a minute to appreciate this studio and this game as we all wait for hopefully their next masterpiece.